Right. The next award is for outstanding contribution to fashion to bring positive change and inclusion on the catwalk and beyond. And to present it, would you please welcome a true queen of stage and screen, Queen Charlotte from Bridgerton, Golda Rucheval. Gosh, all those coaches, amazing, amazing, amazing. I am delighted to be here tonight to celebrate the work of someone very special. Someone you all know, and definitely one of the most recognized people on the planet. A genuine icon. She has helped shape her industry in so many ways and is now synonymous with British fashion. She was only 16 when she was discovered, and since then has kept up an extraordinary pace, constantly building on her incredible international success. In 2018, she was described as being the most powerful person in fashion in Tastemaker magazine, Paper. But even more importantly than all those many achievements, she has helped people at every possible opportunity. She has raised millions for the victims of hurricanes, floods, earthquakes, and terrorism, amongst other initiatives. She has, she has led the fight for real diversity in fashion and has led the charge when it came to pursuing magazine publishers, advertisers, and so on, to make sure that women of color were fairly represented. It's been a long struggle, and it's far from over. But the changes that have been single-handedly brought about by this lady are breathtaking. Famously, she was a friend, supporter, and inspired by Nelson Mandela, the man she affectionately refers to as Papa. In 2021, she was asked to undertake the incredible prestigious role of international ambassador for the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. She was recently given a doctorate of fashion from the University of Creative Art. Like me, she hails from South London. When I first met her, she interviewed me for her fabulous show, No Filter. Bridgerton had, had just landed and it was one of my first interviews coming out of the pandemic. I was shitting myself. <laughs> but she was so kind and generous. She was genuinely interested in my journey and made me feel so at home. It was like talking to my best mate. Ladies and gentlemen, you've surely guessed who I've been talking of. So without further ado, let's watch some of her incredible achievements. International supermodel, activist and philanthropist, Naomi Campbell is one of the most prolific and influential profiles of contemporary culture today. Naomi Campbell was born in London and discovered as a fashion model aged 15. Over the past four decades, she's fronted the covers of more than 1,000 magazines, been featured in advertising campaigns for celebrated luxury houses including Burberry, Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, Louis Vuitton, Yves Saint Laurent and Valentino, and walked iconic shows for Chanel, Azedine, Alaya, Christian Dior and Versace, all of which has made her one of the most recognizable cultural icons today. Her long-standing commitment to social responsibility stems from the 1990s, when she championed the lack of diversity within the industry. She was the first black model to appear on the cover of Time magazine, 
French and Russian Vogue, as well as the first British black model to appear on the cover of British Vogue. A passionate advocate for diversity, she started the Diversity Coalition in 2013 to tackle racial inclusivity in the global fashion industry. For over 25 years, Campbell has worked closely with numerous international charities. Human rights and global health have been critical sectors of Naomi's charity work. Today, Campbell continues to secure her place as a cultural innovator, using her incredible platform and success for positive change across industries around the world. It gives me great, great pleasure to award Naomi Campbell the v Variety Club Silver Heart Award for her outstanding contribution to fashion, to bringing positive change and inclusion to the catwalk and beyond. Thank you so much. Good evening. My goodness. Um, a man greatly admired once said, giving children a healthy start in life, no matter where they are born or the circumstances that they are born into, is the moral obligation of every one of us. That man was Nelson Mandela, a man I knew a man that I called Tata. I knew Tata for 20 years, and he influenced my commitment to do service. That's where it began for me. There can be, there can be no keener revelation of a society soul than the way in which it treats our children. Variety Club. I am very nervous. Um, Variety Club, your belief and commitment to ensuring that every child has a right to live their life and their best life and reach their full potential is a beacon of light and that inspires us all. I commend you for your work over the years raising over 300 million pounds for disabled and disadvantaged children. And I am honored to be here tonight to be this year's Varieties Club Shows Business Award for my work and contribution in championing diversity and fashion inclusion. <laughs> the Variety Club is about change. Whether it's by providing vital pieces of equipment, like specifically beds and powered wheelchairs, or awarding grants or youth serving organizations, you are changing the lives of children and their families for the better. And I'd like to think in my own way, I've dedicated much of my career to bringing about change for both on and off the runway. Since 2007, I've served as the honorary president of a charity called Anthos in Milan. It's an Italian organization that works to further the life of social integration of young people with learning disabilities. And I've served as a goodwill ambassador for White Ribbon Alliance Maternal Health. All of this, for me, is something that I do because I want to do. There's never been a strategy in my life I've never had an agent say to me, you need to do this because you're gonna look good. It's what I felt. And that feeling struck me when I entered into South Africa, learning all about apartheid and what the children had seen, suffered, and been through. Most recently, I've been focused on bringing about change in our industry of fashion. Otherwise reluctant to expand on the notion that you have to look a certain way and be a certain way and come from a certain country or background in order to succeed. I started in this industry as 
15 and a half years old and wanting to be the best that I could be. And I quickly learned that I had to give my all. And my all meant 110%, not 100%. As I knew, being a woman of color, that I had a lot more to prove. Not only in my career, but for the causes that I believed in. Being a model has had its challenges, specifically when it comes to inclusion and diversity and accessibility. Through initiatives like the Diversity Coalition, which we started first actually in 1989 and then brought it back again in 2013, along with Iman Bowie and Beth Ann Hardison, I've worked to, we worked to enforce the need for racial diversity on the runways, as at that point, there was none. There's been a significant improvement since then, but there's still a long way to go. It's important for me now to use my voice about being positive, about bringing positive change, and about speaking up when I see that it's not happening. I've had my success, and I need to see the success of the next generation to come. <laughs> Currently, I'm focused on helping emerging designers and in emerging countries, artists, creatives, showcasing all their work and getting to use the platform which our industry of fashion did not allow. I don't think it was intentional, but we have platforms in Milan, Paris, London, New York, but we've never allowed those emerging designers and creatives to have a chance to step onto our platform. So that's where I'm at in my life right now. I'd like to say one more time, congratulations to the Variety Club for their incredible difference that they make in the lives of so many children. Congratu thank you so much, Jonathan, for having me. And let's keep on striving exercising what I call the three Ds, determination, dedication, and drive. To be honored tonight for my work is incredibly humbling, and I truly thank you all. Thank you. Well done.